Welcome to Gibson's Caring Corner. I'm Tracy Gibson and my husband, Creighton Gibson. And we're glad you're able to join us today. Today we're going to be talking about Parkinson's. Some people just call it PD. And learning more about this condition and about how you can successfully maneuver within the, the symptoms of the condition. So, first of all, just what is Parkinson's? Parkinson's mostly affects the aging adults, that, but can occur in younger adults as well. The results from the gradual degeneration of brain cells that produce dopamine in the portion of the midbrain that controls body movements is what the condition is. Dopamine is a chemical that relays messages to control movements in your body. So it, it tells your body how it can move. When approximately 60 to 80% of the dopamine producing cells are damaged and do not produce enough dopamine, the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease, they appear. So 60 to 80 percent. So the motor symptoms of the disease um, vary from person to person. So that always makes it difficult. You get this long list and it's like, well, is that what I have? So the symptoms are shaking or tremoring at rest. So when you're just sitting still, you can't stop that shake. Slowness of movement called bradykinesia. Stiffness or rigidity of the arms, legs, or trunk. Not being able to move easily and it's just very stiff. Trouble with balance and falls. Now some other symptoms of Parkinson's disease and Creighton and I are just going to go over these um, together may be depression, anxiety, and just being irritable. Cognitive changes, attention span, memory problems, personality changes, psychosis and hallucinations. Lightheadedness and low blood pressure upon standing. Constipation. Excessive sweating, especially of the hands and the feet. Dry skin. And, you know, if you have dry skin, you know, put that, put that extra lotion on. Mm. Um, a lot of times we need that extra lotion anyway, especially um, during certain times of the years in, in winter mainly. Mm. Um, urinary urgency, frequency, and incontinence. Loss of sense of smell. Sleep disorders. Pain. Tightness, tingling, burning, micrographia, uh, small cramped handwriting, reduced arms, arm swing, not being able to, you know, swing your arms, slight foot drag on the affected side, creating a shuffled walk. Freezing, the phenomenon of being stuck in place when attempting to walk. You're just all of a sudden you're walking and you can't move. So those are some of our symptoms that we have to deal with. Common eye problems may be blurred vision, double vision, excessive tearing, dry eyes, difficulty differentiating between slightly different colors, depth perception, hallucinations, um, involuntary spasm of the eyelids, weakness or fatigue of the eyes, and sensitivity to bright light. Mm -hmm. um, then we get into bathing tips. Of course, you want to provide privacy. Use a transfer bench to assist clients in and out of the tub. Use a shower chair so a client can sit while bathing. Encourage the client to dry off using several small towels rather than one big, large towel. Smaller towels are easier to handle. Ask the client to use handrails in the bathtub or shower for stability. And of course, it if it's one of our clients, we encourage our 
caregivers to call the office and we'll address whatever the issue is. Check for a non-skid rubber mat prior to bathing. And all rugs should have a rubber backing. Encourage the client to use liquid soaps or soap on a rope. Do not use a bar soap. It can be slippery and hard to hold. If bar soap is the only option, cut one leg off of a pair of nylons, drop the soap in the leg, and tie the other end to the handrail. The client can lather up through the nylon without dropping it. Now that's pretty smart. Yeah, I wish I would have thought of that, but I did not. So we, we need to put that down. And nylon, most people probably don't even know what that is anymore. Pantyhose is what us older ladies would call those things. And, right. mo and most ladies don't even like to wear them things anymore. But putting that bar of soap in one of those legs and um, using that like your rope, but it would mm -hmm. you can just lather with it and, and not lose it and be able to hang on to it. That, that's smart. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that idea. Yep. All right, so other <clears throat> grooming tips. A client with Parkinson's can experience rig rigidity and tremors, making grooming very difficult. Encouraging the client to sit down to brush their teeth, shave, and while performing other grooming activities to reduce the risk of falling and to save energy because they can get tired after they've been, been moving a lot. Do not rush the client while grooming. Plan ahead to allow plenty of time to complete the task. And then while you're doing that, you know, the next things might be toileting, trying to establish a regular bathroom schedule. You know, if you if you develop a schedule, and it might be, of course, you go to the bathroom when you first get up during the during the day, um, and if you have your morning coffee, juice, tea, what have you, then maybe an hour and a half, two hours later, maybe a general reminder that you need to go. Well, you need to go to the restroom. Let's go ahead and try to go now. And then next, you may have your lunch, and then an hour and a half, two hours after lunch, another general reminder. Developing that schedule and helping their body. Um, get used to a time to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and that will help them avoid you know, any accidents mm -hmm. because you know people, even though they can't control um, some symptoms um, that are happening, doesn't mean they're not going to get embarrassed. So helping helping them deal with that and helping them be very productive is is important. Limit the fluid intake two hours prior to going to bedtime. Avoid caffeinated drinks such as coffee, tea, and soda, which can worsen urinary problems. Oh, and that would be hard to, for us to do because I do enjoy my coffee. But yep. maybe instead of four cups a day, maybe one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> might be a good choice. All right. So if your client complains of burning pain, call the franchise office immediately. Burning pain, that might be something happening with the bladders, might be something happening with a UTI infection. You're not right. certain. So calling your doctor, if you're with um, a professional agency, calling the agency and the nurse that is in, that works with you would help you um, analyze that and possibly direct you to your doctor's office for help. Right. Encourage clients to use pads or other incontinent products if they are prone to accidents and can't be near a bathroom. Allow plenty of time to use the toilet. Offer the client a bell to ring to alert you when they need help. Offer the client a urinal, bed pan, or commode to use at night to help reduce bathroom trips. And then call us. Call us, me, and call in your franchise agency, your office, your nurse case manager, your doctor. Um, if, if you need a modification um, or an assistive device that could help you have success. Very good. Dressing tips. Allow the client to do as much as possible themselves. Allow plenty of time for dressing. Rushing the client can lead to stress and frustration. Encourage the client to sit down when dressing. Choose a chair, a chair with firm support and arms. Do not sit on the edge of the bed. This can lead to loss of balance, falling off the side of the bed. Use a footstool to make it easier to put on shoes and socks. Choose clothing with fewer buttons, zippers, and other closures that can be difficult to use. And just thinking about that, you know, 
Velcro, you can get a roll of Velcro anywhere. You used to couldn't get it so easily, but you can. Mm -hmm. Even if it's at like at a Hob Hobby Lobby or, or Walmart, anywhere, mm -hmm. you can get those things. And so you can put that um, and attach it to where buttons and buttonholes are. And so you can turn it into just a, a Velcro type closure you know, to make it easy. Makes reminds me of when we first opened, we met Dawn Wells at corporate. Mm -hmm. who had come up with a clothing line that was Velcroed, and they were very and, um, and really good-looking. And Creighton has an autographed picture of her, to, and, yes, and the viewing audience may not know who she is. So who is Don Wells? Well, of course, it's Marianne on Gilligan's Island. There you go. So, yes, yeah, so she had a love for um, helping seniors as well, and she did develop a clothesline that would help seniors be successful mm -hmm. whenever their fingers, uh, maybe through arthritis or what have you, maybe through Parkinson's, yeah. could no longer fasten and button things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, made a lot, lot easier. Yes. Uh, avoid pants with elastic ankle bands, such as sweatpants. Replace the buttons with Velcro. Encourage the client to wear loose-fitting clothes made of stretchy fabric. It's easier to put on, may be more comfortable for them. Avoid socks with tight elastic bands. Ask the client to wear non-skid socks instead of slippers that can slide off causing a fall. Suggest wearing Velcro shoes with elastic shoelaces. It's easier to put on and take off than regular shoes. And then ask the client to wear low or flat heeled shoes instead of high heeled shoes to improve stability and prevent falls. And of course, if, if our guys are out in the field, we encourage them to call the office if they see there's a need that we may could get assistive devices to help um, their quality of life day to day. So next we're going to talk about um, whenever they're eating. Sometimes um, someone with Parkinson's or PD may need a little bit of assistance. So cutting their food into smaller bite-sized pieces so it's easier to chew and swallow is good. If the client has a swallowing problem, ask him or her to avoid drinking thin liquids or ask them to use a straw, and that will help them not choke and go, you know, go down the wrong way is what we would always say. Yep. Um, encourage the client to sit as straight as possible and stay straight for at least 30 minutes after each meal. And why would we do that? So your muscles and things, they, they slow down. So it gives, it gives your body time to properly digest and all the food to move to where it needs to be through, through, the, um, through the esophagus and through the digestion process um, for 30 minutes. And that was something new I learned as we were preparing today. So that 30 minute is, is important. Be patient. A person with Parkinson's disease may take longer than we do on many things and longer especially to eat. To provide smaller, more frequent meals rather than three large meals per day. And that can help them with their strength give them protein maybe throughout the day yeah. in smaller bites and pieces. But, and not but get as tired. Not get as tired. So maybe instead of three larger meals, it might be five smaller. Mm -hmm. um, ask, ask to, you know, we need to ask for everyone to eat a well-balanced meal and drink fluids throughout the day. Follow um, your physician's instructions on what to eat and making sure if there's any diet restrictions that you adhere to those as well. But more importantly, just making sure mealtime is safe. Mm -hmm. If you have a really tall chair, and maybe you're a few years of into having um, Parkinson's, um, knowing that it's going to get harder and harder just to scoot back in it. You might have to adjust how you're sitting um, into a different smaller chair so that you can more easily sit into it mm -hmm. and not fall or slide off, just like sliding off the edge of a bed. Yep. It's important to, to be safe. Mobility tips. Parkinson's disease leads to rigidity, impaired balance, slowness of movements, or freezing. Even when someone with PD 
perceive a potential hazard, she may not respond quickly. As the condition progresses, the client may shuffle their feet while walking because they're unable to lift their, their legs. Here are some tips. Make sure pathways are well lit, free of clutter, such as shoes, clothes, newspapers, in our case, the dog's balls. <laughs> yes. Um, encourage the client to use a handrail in the bathroom and in bed to assist with turning over or getting in and out of bed. And, of course, if, if we see any modification that need to be done, we'll try to help them with that process. And you could have said this, and I, and I may have missed it, but... Um, is this is suggesting suggesting like if you're walking with someone <clears throat> to make sure that they have their nose over their toes. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea of of that rhyme, yep. um, making it stick. Uh, so for safety purposes, um, yeah, you know, because just because you have Parkinson's, that mean you don't you don't like humor. You know, and dad dad had the start of Parkinson's, and he had a little bit of the palsy where he shook a little bit, but. But he got where he'd he'd shuffle his feet a little bit. He could pick both of them up. But it the nose over the toes. Getting out of his when yeah. when he had a a tendency to fall, he always fell backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's like I can kind of relate to that one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So some more things that could happen um, for mobility. Um, moves on into the next page, and it talks about Creighton putting a satin sheet or a piece of satin material tucked across the middle of the bed can make it easier to turn. Yeah. How would that, how would that make it easier? You think? Just less resistance. Mm -hmm. But it's being it's tucked. Slick. Do you think maybe they would it's just pull on it to help to turn? I don't know. Maybe the slickness it's of the just satin. Slick. It yeah. makes it easier for mm -hmm. them. All right, flannel sheets and heavy blankets can make it hard to turn. There you go. Mm -hmm, it does. Um, asking the client to back up to the bed as they would approach a chair until the legs touch the mattress. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming, which I shouldn't do that, that everybody understands, like, even when you're sitting down, um, you have someone back up to the chair until they can touch the chair. The, touch, the chair needs to be With touching the back, the of, their back of their legs, yep. not their hands, their but the, the back of their legs, their calves. And whenever they get there, when they can touch it, then it should be safe for them to sit. But, of course, you, the, the helper or, or a helper has to be their eyes to make sure that the chairs turn correctly and what have you so they can safely sit. Um, with the help of arms, um, slowly sit on the bed would be the way to, to do that. Leaning on a forearm on the side that you plan to lay on. So that would be if you're going to lay on your left side, you would lean in with your forearm on your left side um, first. And the client can then can move their torso down to the bed. They may need assistance with moving their legs onto the bed. I'm um, using cushions and pillows to you know, tuck them in around them so that they're in the right position. If they're if 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 they if you want them on their left side. Of course, you would tuck them behind them on their left side, and then they, and then if you want them on the right, it'll be the opposite. Keep blankets over the client's feet loose to make it easier to turn. Because again, mm -hmm. you know you don't want anyone getting to where they have any any sores or damage to their skin because they've been laying on that one spot too long. Now, next it says getting out of bed. You can ask um, ask your loved one to bend their knees. Um, with their feet flat on the bed. So that would be the first step to make it easy. And then they can roll on their side toward the edge of the bed by letting the knees fall to that side. Now, once they're in that position, they would reach the arm furthest from the edge of the bed across the body and then swing the legs from the bed while they push with their arms into a sitting position. I hope, I hope I said that well enough that it made sense for all of y'all listening. All right, Creighton, so, what's next? getting up from a chair or wheelchair or a bed, allow plenty of time for the client to prepare herself to feel comfortable when she's ready to stand. Don't rush the process. If the client's in a wheelchair, lock the wheels. 
The client's feet need to be flat on the ground, shoulder distance apart. Encourage the client to use solid chairs with armrests. Ask the client to lean forward, nose over toes. Avoid pulling on the client's arms or shoulders to help pull them up. And you know, let's stop with that one because it is so easy. I've seen so many children like my age mm -hmm. pull on their parents like that. So yeah. I would not want to help Creighton by going, all right, Creighton, I yep. need you to get up. It, right. you, don't, you don't do that. Um, it, it, can, it can help them fall. So that's not proper. Yeah. So you want to use a um, gate belt to assist them out of the chair if necessary. Um, one of one PD symptom is loss of balance. Stay close to a client to prevent falls. And so what that gate belt does, if you're not familiar with that, um, you just put it around their waist. And if they start to you know, become uneasy, you can just grab a hold of that belt, not them, but in the middle, like the middle yeah. center, the middle front, and steady them. It can, it can help prevent the fall by using that, that belt. Mm -hmm. So going on into fall prevention, so, again, as the disease progresses, often the frequency and severity of the falls increases. With time, a person loses confidence and becomes more prone to falling by second-guessing movements and counter-movements when standing and walking. Visual problems should also be considered as a possible cause of the falls in Parkinson's disease. Because if you can't see and it does affect your eyes, you know, maybe it's... Not the body movement. Maybe it's because you can't see where you're walking. Or but, your depth perception. Yes. Go away. Mm -hmm. Fall injuries are a common cause for hospitalization for people with Parkinson's disease. Frequent falls may lead to repeated fractures and other soft tissue injury. So fractures can lead to longer periods of immobilization, which can cause depression and loss of confidence. Right. So... Tips for assisting in preventing falls is removing clutter from pathways. And, and sometimes you can't remove the clutter. You know, if you're taking your Parkinson's patient somewhere and there's mats at the doors whenever you're going in and then their walker gets caught on the mats, you know, those are things that you, know, you can't correct. But in the home, you can correct them yourself. Allow enough space to walk around the furniture Encourage, um, encourage your loved one to use ha all the handrails coming in, going out mm -hmm. in the bathrooms. Suggest that you keep one hand free when walking to allow them to grab onto a sturdy object to stop a fall. Mm -hmm. And so the, the rollators might not be good enough because you, you have to have control of the rollator. And, and sometimes with Parkinson's, you might not have that control. But or just with the handheld, yeah, the handheld walker, um, mm -hmm. you can. You can work with that because you won't, you won't be going too fast with it. It'll be safer. Allow plenty of time for activities and tasks. And um, a symptom of Parkinson's that was mentioned earlier is freezing. Mm -hmm. The involuntarily inability to move temporarily. So... If your loved one is facing that, then what you need to do is just tell them to relax. Let's, let's just stop for a minute. Just relax. And then once their body starts to relax, then just count out loud. All right, we're just going to count to, we're going to count to 10. One, two, just count to 10. And then that, that should give them the ability to take a breath, relax, and maybe enable that freezing to go away so that they can take that next next step. Yeah, their body, the, the brain knows what it wants to do, but the body has to catch up. Yes. So, we, one of our, our first clients was like that, and and we'd take about five seconds, and, and we would, we didn't count, but we talked about something else, and then we said, okay, now it's time to walk. Mm -hmm. and, and he could usually do it. So a, a source where we got most of this information today is pdring.com. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to mention one other thing. I, I, was able to, um, I was able to visit a My Thai studio mm -hmm. 
in Mooresville, North Carolina, and they have a session on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays that is only for Parkinson's disease. Oh. And if you were to Google rock steady boxing, um, it is a form of exercise developed only for Parkinson's. So mm-hmm. no one in the class will have anything except Parkinson's disease. So your loved one could feel really safe in doing that. They also have volunteers that have worked with Parkinson's disease. Maybe it was their own loved ones that show up and just kind of help people. So I was able to to help along with um, our friend, um, Elijah, who Mm -hmm. also works with us, was able to help this gentleman walk on a balance beam. We got to see him put on boxing gloves and I don't know what it is about men and boxing gloves, but they get they get these gloves on, and it's all oh yeah. I might could have I might could have lifted a hundred pounds before, but now it's like five hundred. They're like they're ready, mm-hmm. and you could just see the the kick in his step per se. Yeah. Um, it the increased brain. whenever whenever he put on those gloves. So I, I was happy to see that. They also they played music so they could enjoy the music. Some people enjoyed the music. Just at break, I saw a man and a woman that did not come together, but it was just fun music, and, and they were they were shagging. They were doing shag dancing in the middle of the break. And, of course, yes, they had Parkinson's, so they weren't, they weren't going fast, but they were having a great time. But that interaction um, with people is still very important. Mm-hmm. And um, that dopamine, those levels um, that they're fighting and trying to – trying to take advantage of when you're exercising, that that is that works and that has proven to work. Yeah. So the the music also helps them. It's kinda of like mm-hmm. counting one to five, the music mm-hmm. when they start thinking about it, they don't they just do the movements. They don't think about it. And yes. they can do them better. Mm-hmm. And some of the steps that even reminded me of volleyball practice, like mm-hmm. you know having the ladder down across the you yeah. know across the floor and having to step on the ladder, not in the middle, and you know walking walking through different um, obstacles. So yeah. they had lots of different activities like that. But um, the the name of the gentleman um, that is um, over that location in Mooresville, and he also said he had a location in Hickory, mm-hmm. is Coach J T Smith. And so um, he believed there was something that he could do for help to help people. And when he started researching, he found um, the certification. So he became certified um, to be able to help people with Parkinson's disease. So I would encourage you to reach out and contact them about this program. And I'll even tell you a phone number because it's right here. It's Lake Norman. My tie, yeah, um, and I could have said that wrong. I got a, I got a, I got a grimace there. But anyway, seven zero four six five seven one zero eight zero. So, um, call them and see how um, you could take advantage of what they have to offer um, for yourself or for a loved one. Yep. Thank you for joining us. Let's go back through time with the stories of Elizabeth Ann Reinhardt Gibson in Mooresville, North Carolina. Bill Reinhardt and Bud Dalton would go together and go to Press Hub store and buy bars of candy and eat it and then spread hours, not spread, spend hours of whittling wood out to put in the candy wrap to take to Sarah and laugh their heads off when she found out what they had done. Lawrence Staley spent time at our house on weekends. I would sing... Mars eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy. And he said, Tygon, Tygon, couldn't stop humming the silly song. Daggone, daggone, I can't, my eyes today. Uh, Daggone, couldn't stop humming the silly song. Mares. Oh, mares, yeah. Mares is horses, isn't it? Yes. Mayors. All right, so so let's let's just do it let's again. Do it again. All right, very good. So Lawrence Staley spent time at our house on weekends. I would sing, "Mayors eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy." And he said, "Doggone, 
couldn't stop humming that silly song. So, Virgil worked driving a Johnson transfer truck for years, and I would spend the nights with Ruth, Susie, and Gwen. We would drive him to work in Charlotte, and we would keep the 39 Plymouth most times. Everywhere we would go, Ruth would fix us a picnic. If anyone likes a picnic any better than she does, I don't know who it would be. During the week, if we could scrape enough money together, Bill Maher and I would drive to the connoisseur to buy a tray of barbecue pork and rolls. While we were gone, Ruth and Susie would pour the Pepsi, make slaw, and get us ready to eat in a hurry. Most times, we would not have enough money, so Ruth would tell Gwen to go get her piggy bank and get us more money. She robbed that gal's bank lots of times. Then, one, then the week, I had three different dates with three different fellows, and Ruth made three different cakes to serve us. Man, you really have to put yourself out there for me. Thanks, I said. Oh, yes, I forgot talking about the black 1939 Plymouth we drove to get barbecue this particular night, and Bill Maher and I came back into the yard, parked the car in the driveway, and rushed into the house with our treasure. Anxious to eat. I took the car keys and did everything as always. We ate and had a jolly good time. Afterwards, Ruth stepped to the front door and she said, What did you do with the car? Why? We parked it right there in front of the house. Why? It's not out here, she said. We ran out and looked around and that little 39 had rolled down through the yard right to the edge of the big gully and had, by some miracle, stopped with the front wheels so close to the edge, I was afraid to get in to back it up. That would have been tough. So back up again in time, I remember running down the hill to meet Dad and Granddad, riding the hay wagon, and then they pulled the horses to a stop. Granddad leaned over the side of the wagon and pulled me up on top of the hay. We rode on toward the barn. When we got almost to the lower gate, I slipped off the wagon and let the left rear wheel roll over my right kidney area. What? <laughs> they stopped everything, jerked me up off the ground, carried me inside, laid me on the bed, head to the foot of the bed, and covered me up good to keep me from going into shock and kept a close eye on me the next few days. Need I say, I never got to ride the hay wagon again. I hope you've enjoyed today's story with, from Let's Go Back in Time with Elizabeth Ann Reinhardt Gibson. Thank you. Thank you for watching Karen Corner. Be sure that you subscribe, like, and click the notification bell so that you will receive notifications for our weekly program. Don't forget to share this program to your social media platforms. If there's a question that you would like to ask, make sure to email it to caringcorner22 at gmail.com. We hope to see you on the next episode of Caring Corner.